Okay, and share. Let's try this again. All right. Could you type something in the chat just to test the chat? I think you're in the old chat. Hello, everybody, and goodbye again. That was weird. There was someone there for a second, and then they were gone. Okay, Sarah. Hmm. It's a new. It's a it maybe a new link now. Damn it. So the link I sent to everyone is no longer valid. Oh, still getting my wrapping my head around the whole live streaming thing and trying to um, make sure that people can actually see what's going on. Thank you for testing the chat. I appreciate it. Okay. So today, uh, this is the first in our clown tech live streams that we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to be focusing today on a makeup tutorial and also um, a, a little Accenture juggling tips. So what I have with me today is um, the following supplies for my makeup tutorial. They are a Cryolon TV paint set. Why do they do this with their hands? So that the camera can focus on the thing that you're, thing that you're displaying. A Cryolon TV paint stick. Very hard to read. A Ben Nye color wheel. Some makeup sponges and my brushes and a powder sock. So, how many of those things do you think you're actually going to use? How many of the brushes I'm going to use? I'm going to use this brush for red, this brush for black. I'll probably do all the white with my fingers, and then this brush for removing the powder when I'm done. So, I got like 30 brushes, of which I'm going to ever use three, maybe four. Um, it might be good to have a brush for white as well. See if I can find another tiny one. I think I may have taken all the tiny brushes out already. Well, Sunday you might use one of the brushes, like that really fanny one you could use for blush Sunday or something. Okay. Is that a blush brush? Yeah, I don't know. It's something. It's something, all right. Okay, so we're going to get started. We've already cleaned our face and shaved. Oh, my God, shave. Because stubble shows up so much when you put on grease paint. Uh, it looks really weird. Um, I'm going to just dab this around my face and the head. You can see it's a slightly different color than my skin's, but it's fairly close. And then all of my skin's. Why are you pluralizing skin? Because I've got all the skin's. But it's really just one organ. It is one organ. All right, so you can see I have put it on. Now I'm going to smear it about a bit. And then afterwards I will pat it in to make sure I haven't left any kinds of finger marks or streaking. So what is this? This is like your foundation? This is a foundation. This is what the makeup style we're doing today is light auguste. And so this just gives you a, a uniformly colored palette to start with? Exactly. Covers up any major imperfections 
for issues. It looks fairly uniform to me. How's it look here? Uh, yeah. I know. As far as you can tell. Me the best judge. <laughs> Please note I'm legally blind. <laughs> All right. Here we go again. We're going to add a leather layer just for safety. So two layers of foundation. Two layers of foundation. This is called what again? This is um, Krylon's TV paint stick. I picked it because it was the closest in color to my own skin color, just slightly darker than my skin color. Is it important to be very exact with the skin color matching? It is helpful because the closer it is to your skin color, the less you're going to need to blend into your neck or worry about your arms or hands being a different color than your face. Okay, so that is the TV paint stick in place. Next, we will go uh, in shades from lightest to darkest. So now we will f apply our uh, base white, which I'm really just going to do for my eyes. Uh, when you say... For your eyes, you mean it's just going to go around your eyes? Yeah. Actually, we should probably go darkest to lightest, not lightest to darkest. Okay. So, um, no, we're just going to start with the red, somewhere in the middle. So I've got my Bin Nye color palette. This color is red. And I use that for my lips and my cheeks and my nose. But this is light agus. It's not a heavy makeup technique. So you're not putting a ton of makeup on aside from your foundation. Okay, you're just you're look. going for a very subtle look. I do not have to do the and plug something right now. It's too loud. I don't have to do that. Yeah, I can't do it. I can limit the skills you work on going forward. Mm -hmm. so typically, I only do my bottom lip. Why is that? I like to look better that way. And I'm pretty happy with the way that looks right now. Um, I'm going to put, I'll probably save my blush for after I powdered, but no, let's, let's go ahead and do a little blush now. Just a little bit of red on my cheek and then I will blend that in. It's very subtle. So just to make you look not dead. Mm-hmm. Give a little more life to this exquisite corpse. So I'm just making circles for my cheeks, around where my cheekbones are. We want them to be fairly even in coloration and tone between the two. And of course, placement. And placement, of course. A little more up, a little higher. There we go. Aren't I a pretty princess? All right. Now we're going to move on to our darker colors. So I'm switching to another brush for black. This one has a thin line to it, to the edge, so I can make thin lines. Um, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to do my eyebrows, which I'm just going to paint in in their normal shape. Now, it's a common belief that you should go from the pupil line. Your, your, your cheek dot or your mouth dot should be at the pupil line. 
and your eyebrows should stop at the pupil line. I'm doing light agust, so that opens up your eyebrows and it opens up your face and it makes you seem happier and friendlier. I'm not doing that kind of character makeup. I'm doing more natural, uh, just accentuating makeup. So I am going to do my full eyebrows and not just um, not just half my eyebrows to the pupil line. At some point, will you do full abuse just to just demonstrate the differences? I will attempt to. I gotta get a little closer. It's it is, yeah. Uh, doing makeup, doing makeup on a webcam instead of using a mirror is a different experience. So we'll do it over to the peak, and then down. About like that. Good look. Thanks. I think you need my eyebrows sometimes. Well, now I need to do my other eyebrow. I really should have started. You should start with your bad side so it's easier to make it match when you do your good side. I did not do that because I am a fool, a fool in love with effing up my makeup. That one's got a bit more of an arch to it, yeah. but that's going to be okay. I'm going to fill it in a little bit, straighten it out. And then we'll have to go and do the same thing to the other side. Yeah. Make it a bit more, less perfect. Ooh, a bit more imperfect, that's the word. I'll just give a little more arch to this one. Oh, those are very different angles. That's a little better. Again, they're not they're not the most perfectly matched, but um, I'm going to blame that on the webcam. <laughs> You're going to blame that on the webcam? Well, on doing it on webcam, not the actual webcam. Okay. I was going to say the webcam might have some objections to that. What do you think? Uh, yeah, they are very differently shaped. Mm -hmm. Did you want to start over? Maybe? Yeah. Um, could you grab me a paper towel? Yep. I will do that. Thank you. So with that said, we're going to do a little more with the black in a couple of spots. We're going to um, put a little tiny dot in the corner of my mouth. And we're going to try to do some eyeliner very thinly. Thank you.
All right, we're going to try and thin down this this makeup remover. It's all water. Okay. Ooh, that was more than I meant to use. I meant to use just the tiniest little drop. That's already a lot closer. What do you think? Uh, we'll look at this. Yeah, I think the, the round ones, the one you're touching right now, is a little bit more. It's darker somehow. So my eyebrows are not going to be exactly even. You do want them to be as close as possible because you don't want them to be obvious. Right. You don't want obvious eyebrows. You want subtle eyebrows. Subtle eyebrows. All right, now for the eye lines. These come about an inch or so below your eye. It's just a very thin line right about there. A bit larger than I intended to make it. That's the great thing. Before you set it, you can really just wipe it off. So I've got some cotton brown to hang those. Thanks. I'm going to use these for now. I think this eye line is just a little too dark. So what is an eye line exactly? It kind of accentuates your smile lines when you smile. It um see how they disappear into the creases under my eyes? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So from a distance they're gonna read more like smile lines. And again, this is all about how it reads at a distance. You don't want obvious makeup. If you're doing a light auguste, you want something subtle and minor for a light auguste. Uh, part of the idea is that you don't want to be overwhelming or, um, hello, Thelonious Cube. I'm glad you found me. I'm having a lot of trouble figuring out how to make the, the streaming work correctly. And I think I did a stream briefly earlier, had to restart the stream, and therefore all the links that I sent out no longer worked because I'm still learning how to stream on YouTube Live. These are not new links, right? No, I put the new link on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Because um, I don't want to overwhelm people with my links. Right. And I will be doing this again in a couple weeks. But now we're going to move on to the white part of my makeup, which is just going to be above my eye. Um, and again, I haven't set it, so it's going to blend in. Oh, and we're going to be using the uh, Mehran. Mehran. Uh, cream blend stick in clown white. Um, we're just going to use a little bit of this and it's going to blend in with the agus that I already have on my skin so it won't be quite as bright as it would have been if I had already set the the agus. And this is just to make my eyes pop a little bit more. I should move this to my palm and use my palm like a palette like that so I don't get any residual goose on the stick. So I used as both the style of makeup and the name of the makeup itself? Um, no, I'm probably just saying that for convenience for myself. I don't think they actually officially call the makeup color Auguste. All right. Um, 
working on my second eye. Again, should have started with my left eye instead of starting with my right eye. Goals for the future. Goals for the future. And then after we do the makeup tutorial, we'll do a, be a brief set of tips on eccentric juggling. That's a bit more white than I want. So let's take some of that back off. And I want to actually, still not happy with this eye line. So I'm going to take it off to some degree and just leave the smallest remnant if I can. Let's just. I'm going to add a little more black to my brush and redo that eye line more centered under my eye. Okay, so um, now what I'd like to do is add a tiny bit of white to the red on my cheeks, uh, again, to just kind of make them pop a little bit more. Are there no more tiny, uh, there's a tiny, tiny brush right there. That's what I want, the tiniest of brushes. Um, I'm just going to draw a little a little shape on my cheek. Just a little crescent to make it look a little shinier, a little fresher. Just tap that a bit so it blends a little. And you know, let's add a little bit of blush to my chin. So go back to my red brush, which still has some makeup on it. I'm going to add some blush to my chin and my nose. And what is the goal of that? Um, to accentuate the roundness. To make them stand out a little bit more from the rest of my face. If that makes sense. I'm trying to create a three-dimensional picture because I've removed a lot of the normal lines and creases by having all one color of, of makeup. So add a little more coloration to my chin and my nose. Again, this isn't a full-on clown's red nose. This is just a little bit of red to enhance the nose. which I will blend in. And there you go, now it's time to set. So if you've never used a powder sock before, a powder sock is a way to, um, to set your makeup quickly. It is just a tube sock. Uh, filled with baby powder. Give it a little squeeze, and then you just pat while rotating the sock to try and keep uh, any makeup that gets on the sock from transferring to another part of your face. So you keep rotating the sock. And typically, you would let this sit for five to ten minutes before you brush it off. Or if you sweat a lot, you can just get up and go uh, as soon as you're done powdering. Oh, we just got an email probably saying, where am I? Okay, I think the other link uh, did not work right, and people are going to the other link thinking that it's this link, and that's confusing because I didn't do it right. So that's that's my bad. Um, but that is Whiteface Auguste.
uh, in just a couple of minutes. I'll brush it off and we'll see what it looks like when it's all done. And give it a little more powder. And then I'm going to put my sock inside of another sock to keep it from leaking powder everywhere. All right. So eccentric juggling. Eccentric juggling isn't juggling, for one thing. It's just object manipulation. And you can manipulate any kind of objects. Uh, really commonly are um, cigar boxes are juggled. Um, eccentric, eccentric juggling uh, flare, uh, bartender's flare, when they're flipping the bottles around and doing manipulating the bottles as opposed to juggling a set of three or more. Um, that's also eccentric juggling. The kind of eccentric juggling I tend to do is called uh, um, plate juggling or plate manipulation or just eccentric juggling. And, um, and I tend to do it with plates like this one here. This is just a um, uh, little dollar store uh, Asian restaurant plate. It's uh, melamine, it's plastic, it's heavy. And um, I can't do much eccentric juggling while sitting down, but I can show you a little padiddle if my fingers aren't too slippery from the makeup and the powder. This is called a padiddle. Uh, when you spin a plate on or an object on one finger. Now, when you're learning how to padiddle, it's best to start with something soft, like a pillow or a, well, a book isn't soft, but it's less likely to break. Start with something soft like a pillow or a book. And um, you start by, by placing your finger not in the center of the space, but slightly off center. So you can give it a push and a pull, a push and a pull. And that's what I'm doing. I'm making making ellipses with my fingertip, which I'll lift up so you can see a little bit better. I'm making an ellipsis with my fingertip with a push and a pull to keep it going. Um, after a certain amount of time, your finger will just gradually gravitate towards the center of gravity on the object, and you can spin still. You can hold your finger still for spinning. But you have to, you'll have to do that push-pull technique over and over again to keep it going once you stop spinning. Uh, the best place went, again to start is with something like a textbook or a square pillow. Um, square pillows are great because their center of gravity is a little off and they're big enough and they're not going to hurt anyone or break when they fall. It doesn't take long to learn. If you practice steadily for a week or so, you'll have it down in no time. Um, I can't do it with both hands. I've tried, I can do a little bit with my left hand. I am predominantly a right-handed uh, performer. Um, some other eccentric juggling techniques are um, are flips. Let me show you a, a one-handed or a two-handed flip. So I'm going to step my chair back. Um, you're going to take your hand, turn it upside down and out, put it on the bottom of the plate facing up, push up and around. So you're going up and around, up and around like you're petting a dog's butt. You want to go up and then catch. So the idea is you're using eccentripetal force to keep the plate in place while you move your hand just faster than the plate can fall. And then once you've learned to do that and you don't have baby powder over your hands, you can do it one-handed. You can do it one-handed. Uh, you can do around the thumb. You can do flips to the elbow, drop and catch over one hand, back, all the way around. There's all kinds of things you can do with a plate for eccentric juggling. But again, the most impressive trick is probably the padiddle. And the best way to learn the padiddle is to start with your finger slightly off center on a square pillow, push forward and pull back. You're making an ellipsis, like an egg shape. Forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. And you want to do that slightly faster than the pillow can fall in one direction. And as long as you keep pushing it back up in the direction that it's falling, by going in that ellipsis, it will never fall. And once you get a rhythm, it will keep spinning and keep itself up. Okay, that's probably enough time to brush the powder off. So let's clean up our brush. And get in here and get the powder off. Now, this is just baby powder. That's all I got. Just regular baby powder uh, from a bottle that I put inside of a tube sock, a clean new tube sock <laughs> that I bought for the specific purpose. Um, and 
and there we go. That is light August clown makeup. And again, we got a little bit of a, of a light spot here and here to put highlights on the eyes, the lines under the eyes, which could be a little better if I'm being completely honest, but they're okay. Uh, whiteness around the lids to bring them out and pop, accentuating the eyebrows, accentuating the lips. And as we recall, I put tiny little black dots there and there to accentuate the corners of my mouth. Now, this is not a close-up makeup. This is not a makeup for, for you know, going out for your evening function. This is a makeup specifically for doing performance at a distance. So um, I think that about wraps us up for today nice. for light August makeup and a little bit of eccentric juggling tips. Thank you so much for joining us on our first ever Clown Tech live stream. It was wonderful having you here. Um, and, and thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.